Hey everybody, welcome back. We all know the Axis pedals have so many different features on them, but how do we set them up to our liking? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set mine up and what all the different settings are. Let's get to it, shall we? If you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button so you guys could get more lessons and funny drum covers that I know you love. The first thing I wanna show you all is this little device and mechanism right here that's attached to the spring. It's called a Microtune. Now these are optional on all the Axis pedals and its function is simply to fine tune this spring right here. Instead of having your standard adjustment with the screw at the bottom here and a locking nut, you go up here with your drum key and you have a fine tune adjustment system on it. So as you turn it right to tighten it, it'll go upwards up this slide here and it'll tighten up the spring. And if you go left on the lug here, it'll loosen the spring. This option is really great because you can fine tune the spring tension and if you're playing on different drum kits that have different tensions on the batter of the drum skin, this is very, very handy to have. Now this setting on my left, my slave pedal here, it's about, oh I'd say about an eighth towards the front of the micro tune mechanism itself. Naturally, my left foot is not as strong as my right foot and this pedal here has another one over on the right side of the set of double pedals which I will show you momentarily. Moving forward, this here is called the E-Kit system. Now for all, the, all you metal drummers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And for all you non-metal drummers, I'll explain it here. Now what's happening here is that this little hammer is up on the drive shaft of the pedal. When you hit down on the footboard, this thing follows it. It's got a set screw so you can set the height of it. Once this brass hammer hits down on the top of this box, it creates a signal. And this signal goes out here, which is a quarter inch jack and sends a signal to your module so that you can trigger your pedal externally. You don't actually need to mount a trigger on the bass drum. Now what's really cool with this device here is you don't need to worry about double triggering and you don't have to worry about that bass player being too loud and rumbling your kick drum and it misfiring. Next up here is the VDL and that is this right here. It's got a set screw and so you loosen it. Now you could play with this all the way forward and what that does is that'll drop your footboard right down. Now if you bring it all the way forward, it'll raise your footboard. If you put it all the way forward, you have to push your foot even further down for the, for the kick drum to make a sound. If you bring it all the way back, it does quite the opposite. So in this case on my left foot pedal, I put it in about center. So you still need quite a bit of power to actually make a sound with it but uh, you still get a lot of control. So that's kind of the idea I have with my pedals. Let's go look at the main part of the kick drum pedal and I'll talk about my settings over there too. All right, now we're over to the right side. You'll notice a lot of similarities to the left side, except for there's still another spring here. So what exactly is that doing? Now that's just basically compensating for the, the lack of inertia through the drive shaft here, connecting the left pedal to the right pedal. My settings on this is relatively loose. You can see here, I can just shake it around with my hand. There's barely anything on there. So a lot of the spring tension is coming from the actual spring on the left pedal. The spring is not as big as the other one and is just there to help the slave pedal. Now my right side spring is, is a little bit tighter it's not all that much different from the slave pedal because I try and keep both my feet uniform. The only difference on this pedal is that my VDL up over here is a little slightly behind center. Because I have a, a heavier right foot, I like to stomp down on that and try and get my kicks even. Now one thing that differs my pedals from a lot of other drummers are the beaters on here. Guys like Gene Hoagland or John Dett, a lot of the older drummers use the Danmar wooden beaters. Now I went with a company out of Colorado. You can see it on one of my previous videos. I did an unboxing of it. And these are wooden beaters. Now I get a lot more attack on the kick drum with this Phalum Slam here, that Kevlar patch. And it adds a lot of, uh, a lot, adds a lot of attack to my kick drum sound. This right pedal also has E-Kit on it, and it's tucked away right back there, as you can see now. 
And yeah, I I haven't had the like the need to play with triggers quite yet because I'm just practicing without them. I feel like I need to build up more leg endurance. And uh, not saying that playing with triggers doesn't help with that, but I can uh, I can hear it a lot more, and I get a nice acoustic bass drum sound out of the microphone. So there's no point to blend it with the uh, the trigger. I've been doing a lot of work in the studio, and I'm just trying to get my my footwork a lot tighter. But uh, alas, that is my Axis double pedal setup, and those are some of the settings that I use. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to hit me up in the comments below. And once again, if you're not subscribed, hit that button. It'll keep me going and making more great content for you guys. Anyway, have a great one. Hope you learned something new. See you on the next one.